Hey, everybody, what's happening? Happy Saturday. We are 10 minutes into Saturday here as we go live on the Syracuse.com, Syracuse Orange Basketball Facebook page. And, boy, March is weird, isn't it? Syracuse has advanced. They have a shot at the Sweet 16 as Syracuse <laughs> wasn't the prettiest game in the world by any stretch of the imagination. But you know what you have to do in March, kids? Survive and advance. And for two straight games, you cannot spell survives without SU. As they take down TCU tonight in Detroit, 57 to 52, was the final score. It was a historic night in college basketball. Syracuse certainly on the undercard of history as UNBC takes down the number one seed Virginia. It is the first time in the history of the NCAA tournament since the field expanded to 65 teams, 64 teams, then in 1985, now 68 teams, of course, that a number one seed lost. So in the shadows of that, the Orange play a ugly game. It was uh, a game only a mother could love, and I think even mom bailed on this one at one point, but Syracuse fans will take it because they get a shot at the Sweet 16 on Sunday, it will not be easy as they will get Michigan State in Detroit. So the home crowd will certainly be uh, green and white for sure. Syracuse fans will represent as best as they can. Uh, uh, Derek Coleman was there tonight. Dave Bang, the former mayor of Detroit. And, of course, the backcourt mate and Hall of Famer, uh, along with Jim Beheim back in the day, uh, was there tonight in Detroit. So uh, Detroit certainly has some orange representation, but they're going to be fighting a sea of green and white come Sunday, but look, all you can ask for is a chance in the team that shouldn't have been there, right? The team, right, Doug Gottlieb, that did not deserve to be in this tournament now has a chance to go to the Sweet 16 on Sunday. So, hey, please like and share. I see you guys are doing that. Appreciate that. Get in the comments. Do your thing, right? And I'll uh, get in there and uh, respond to some of your comments. Appreciate you staying up late. As well, we were all up watching the game anyway. Probably got jacked up a little bit seeing a number one seed go down. So, hey, we might as well do the Facebook thing. So, appreciate you guys hanging out here tonight. So, a few things, and then I'll just jump in the comments with you guys a little bit here. Yeah, not the prettiest game in the world. Oh, mama, was that thing ugly. But that's what Syracuse wants to do. And for two straight games, Syracuse has played really good offensive teams and kind of brought them into the mud pit with them. You know, you think of Jamie Dixon, you think of those Pittsburgh teams that you should just kind of slog by, right, and they want to, you know, muck it up a little bit. Well, this is not what Jamie Dixon has been doing this year for TCU. This is a team that was 20th in the country in scoring. They were averaging 83 points per game, but what Syracuse does so well is they bring you down into these wrestling matches, and it becomes a slugfest, and it becomes a free throw fest, and it becomes about rebounds and defense and grit. And that's what this Syracuse team is identified by, and they did it again tonight. And, you know, Merrick Doljai is the story of this game. Now he followed out in the second half. He cooled down a bit after a huge first half, but he leads the way with 17 points, and Syracuse needed it because O'Shea Brissett was 4 of 16. He ended up with 13 points, hit some big shots down the stretch, but he was awful on the offensive end for most of the night. Got to the free throw line, 5 out of 6 there. But Frank Howard, just 3 of 11. Tyus Battle, 3 of 12. But timing was everything in this game as Tyus and Frank both hit big shots down the stretch at one point to put Syracuse up 54 to 49. And they just kind of slugged their way through this one. Not a pretty game by any stretch of the imagination. Frank Howard and, and Tyus Battle combined to shoot, let's see, they, they, they combined to shoot 6 of 23 and combined for 14 points. And Syracuse wins this game against a really good offensive team, which goes to show you how good the defense was. Jamie Dixon knows how to coach against that zone defense, right? Well, it's one thing to know it. It's quite another to relay it to your team that's not used to seeing it. When he was at Pittsburgh, of course, you know, those Pittsburgh teams played Syracuse twice a year. They knew the plan. They knew how to execute it. They knew how to do it. Not the case for TCU tonight. TCU went over eight minutes in the second half without a field goal. So as bad as Syracuse was on the offensive end, they were 21 to 57. That's 37%. They're used to it. They're used to playing that way and are used to being bad on the offensive end, whereas TCU couldn't recover from playing that bad on the offensive end. They were 19 to 48 for uh, shooting 39% tonight. Another big thing for Syracuse, this has been one of their big tells all year long, rebounding. 
and Syracuse had a huge gap in the rebounding for most of the game. TCU caught up a little bit in the second half, but Syracuse winning the rebounding battle 37 to 34. So look, when it comes to Syracuse, you'd rather win ugly than lose pretty. Embrace the grind if you are the Orange, because that's how you're going to win these games. Now, Michigan State is going to be one heck of a challenge on Sunday. Did you guys see uh, Miles Bridges tonight for Michigan State in the game against Bucknell prior? Bucknell's a good team. Bucknell, is they were misseeded at 14, but, you know, much like uh, most of this game, Bucknell couldn't hit a shot in the second half, and Michigan State pulled away. But, boy, Miles Bridges was all over the place. He is one of the best players in the country. He is one of the best players left in this tournament with Arizona and Virginia gone. Uh, Trey Young from Oklahoma gone. There's a lot of great players left in this tournament, a lot of great stories left in this tournament, none bigger than UNBC, of course, taking down Virginia. But Miles Bridges, man, he can hit from the wing. He can dunk. He can hit the three. He's all over the place. He is going to be a nightmare for Syracuse in the zone defense. And I'm sure you guys noticed this tonight. Listen, you know, Pascal Chukwu really struggled uh, physically. You could tell he was laboring out there tonight. Hit some free throws, though. Six of six at the free throw line. <laughs> Pascal Chukwu is your free throw. Free throws matter. That's that's what it is. Free throws matter, kids, right? But where did this come from, from Pascal? So six of his eight points come at the free throw line. Had 10 rebounds. He was really laboring out there tonight. So that's something to keep an eye on, certainly come Sunday against Miles Bridges, because that kid is one of the more athletic big men you'll see in the country. So Syracuse is going to have their hands full against the Spart- uh, against Sparty for sure. But listen, this is what they do. This is what Syracuse does. They overcome odds. They, they throw other teams off their game. They embrace their grind. They embrace their physical, tough style of play. And they just keep advancing. So you can't count out Syracuse even in a harsh environment in Detroit with plenty of Michigan State fans there because if they can somehow contain Bridges and throw Michigan State off their game and drag them down in the mud pit here, you know, that's what March is all about. All you can ask for is an opportunity, and the, and the Orange keep cashing in. So let's see what you guys are saying here as we are in the early morning hours of Saturday morning, late Friday night. Hey, if we're going to stay up late, Again, we might as well see a little history with UMBC beating Virginia and see a Syracuse win, right? Uh, Marv saying if uh, Merrick can continue to play offensively smart, Howard becomes uh, a better point when he distributes. Yeah, Frank really struggled again tonight, turned the ball over a few times, couldn't hit a shot. Tyus Battle, not there. O'Shea Brissett struggled for most of the game. Of all people, Merrick Dolja who did not have a career high, by the way. That was 20 points against Wake Forest in the ACC tournament. But he is such an – It's John says it right there. I was just going to say, John, that's a great point. X factor. Now, you said the zone is the X factor in the tournament, and that's certainly true. But you know who else is a uh, X factor? Uh, That's Merrick Dolzhai. If you do not guard him and you leave him open in that paint, he's going to hit some shots on you. And I'm sure Tom Izzo is going to notice that and they'll come after him a little bit harder, so it's going to take Ty's battle and O'Shea and Frank Howard to step up a little on the offensive end against Michigan State come Sunday. But Merrick has been such a big X factor for this team, and he's, it's been off and on. He didn't really do much on the offensive end against Arizona State, but if you sleep on him, you know, that's what he can do for you. He can hit some shots. He had some big rebounds in this game, set and picks, some good defensive plays as well. Uh, Michelle saying, it is what it is. Don't be haters. Syracuse won. We are SU. Christopher saying, Battle and Frank won't play this bad on Sunday. That tends to go back and forth. You know, they had a really bad game against North Carolina in the ACC tournament. Bounce back, you know. But we've seen it enough that it's something to keep an eye on, and it's something that can't continue if Syracuse wants to beat Michigan State. Uh, So, Chris, you better hope you're right about that and that those two show up on the offensive end. They're certainly going to need them against Michigan State on Sunday. Marv saying TCU played frightened, didn't want to take a shot beyond the arc. You know, it was the classic case of a team loses confidence, they get out of their rhythm, they get out of their game, they start taking bad shots. That Syracuse zone is it's confusing. It comes in waves. It's not just a typical two, three, as you know, Bill Raftery would say. It's got man to man principles. You're you're doubling guys and you know, there was a great adjustment made on the zone because TCU hit three three three-point shots really in the first, what, six, seven minutes of the game because 
what typically happens is the corner gets open. So what Syracuse has to do is make that adjustment, and they did tonight, and, yeah, fell right into Syracuse's lap once again because then you start seeing ghosts, you start seeing things that aren't there, and you start taking bad shots. And, you know, we mentioned it. TCU went over eight minutes in the second half without a field goal. Syracuse couldn't really capitalize on that because they were struggling on the offensive end themselves. But as weird as this is to say, you know, that's what they're used to. That's what they're used to. You know, Allie, uh, was it Allie of the Force? Yeah, I think it was Allie of the Force the other night. Not tonight against Arizona State. Asked Jim Beheim about, you know, hey, coach, why'd you struggle on offense that half? And Jim just kind of smiled at her and said, that's who we are. <laughs> it's, that's the kind of team. Syracuse is. They're not an offensive juggernaut by any stretch of the imagination. They find other ways to do it, and they grinded it out and certainly did that tonight. Uh, let's see. Joe saying it's like going to prom with an ugly person. Yeah, you're at prom, but look who you're at prom with. I guess that's one way to put it, huh? Uh, let's see. Uh, Donald saying, Brent, do you believe it? <laughs> do I believe in miracles? Hey. I'll take it, man. That's that's pretty good. That's I'll, that's pretty good. Uh, Marv making a good point. The freshmen are no longer freshmen. Yeah, this time of the year, you're not a freshman anymore. And that's the beauty of this. I saw Michael Antonio make a point in the comments as well. This team's playing with house money now. They didn't. They weren't supposed to be here. They weren't supposed to be in the tournament. And now they've won two games in the tournament. And no matter what happens on Sunday, they had a shot at the Sweet 16. Now, if they beat Michigan State and get in the Sweet 16. You know how many brackets have Michigan State winning at all? I mean, we've already seen Virginia go down. We've already seen Arizona go down. There's a lot of brackets, including this guy's, that have Michigan State winning the whole thing. So in a weird tournament, you know, why not? Why can't Syracuse take him down? You're going to have to contain Miles Bridges, though. That kid is unbelievable. I'm sure you watched the game before Syracuse, Michigan State, Bucknell. That kid's a zone buster. So, you know, they're going to go after him. They're going to double him. They're going to do what they can, but he can hit from everywhere. So that is going to be a big, big challenge for Syracuse come Sunday. They just keep doing it, though. They keep doing it despite the fact they have six guys. They keep doing it despite – we mentioned Pascal was just clearly laboring out there tonight, but he's hitting free throws, getting rebounds. Merrick Dolzhai gets this team off to an offensive start. The defense is great, and, you know, lo and behold – here they are. As Michael says, the cardiac kids, I'm getting too old for this. We thought we were too old for this, right, Michael? Staying up late, the close games, but, you know, maybe it's it's like an elixir of life. It just keeps us going here. We need something to, you know, keep us going with all the snow outside and the long, cold winter. Spring allegedly starts next week. Yeah. How about that? We're going to get another nor'easter coming through with about another foot of snow. Hopefully not. Maybe it'll miss us this time, but... You know, Syracuse gets us through the winter, and it's getting us through March as well, right? Uh, Let's see. Garrett Smith saying that uh, the QC is very frustrating for good offensive teams, particularly if you're an offensive team that doesn't see a lot of zone. And, you know, when Arizona State, when Syracuse beat them the other night, you look ahead and you say, oh, TCU and Jamie Dixon. And it was notable because Jamie Dixon is now 15-7. and He was 15-6 and against Syracuse coming into this game. But, again, not with this team. This TCU team was actually pretty anti-typical Jamie Dixon. 19th in the country in scoring, 83 points per game. You know, they were an offensive-minded team. If anything, the roles were reversed. Syracuse was always the offensive-minded team, and the pit teams coached by Jamie Dixon were the, you know, kind of let's get in the muck and, you know, drag it around 50s and 60s type of basketball games. These two teams reverse roles tonight. Syracuse brought them down into the mud, and TCU couldn't handle it. So on a short turnaround, T, you know, Jamie Dixon could not teach this TCU team what his Pittsburgh teams knew so well, and that's what Syracuse can continue to do. Now, Tom Izzo, Michigan State, different story because they've got the personnel to beat that zone. They've got the shooters to beat that zone. They're one of the deepest teams in the country. So this is the way that Syracuse beat Arizona State and TCU is not the way – they can beat Michigan State. They're going to have to play a little offense to beat Michigan State. They're going to have to fight fire with fire. They're going to need O'Shea Brissett to be the player he was against Arizona State. You're certainly going to need Ty's battle to have a great game. You're going to have to score a little bit against Michigan State. You cannot win that game the same way that won the last two. That's the thing with the tournament. You can find an identity and you can find something to rest on, and Syracuse has done that a lot 
with the zone defense, but it can only carry you so far. You got to score a little bit at some point, and Sunday is certainly going to be the case there. A couple of you asked, I have not seen a game time for Syracuse, Michigan State yet. I will, uh, you know what? I will check while we're uh, yakking about it here because uh, sometimes, aha, I think I just spotted it. God bless the internet. So, Let's see here, guys. I'm just pulling this up while we're chatting about it here. Give me a moment to look. So we've got Sunday. We got a game time of 2.40 p.m. There you go. Confirmed. Syracuse, Michigan State, 2.40 tip time. Well, you know, why not make it another 9.30 game? I'm, I'm used to these staying up late with you guys, right? I'm used to having three cups of coffee at 10.30 at night because that's really healthy, right? There, there is a 940 tip, Marshall, West Virginia. Can we switch with them? Because it's been good karma for Syracuse to play at, at 9 o'clock at night. But it is a 240 tip time on Sunday, and that game will be on CBS. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Now we know uh, when to watch Syracuse on Sunday. Anthony saying, does this feel like 2016 again? It does because you know Michigan State's involved. In 2016, it was because they lost and cleared a path for Syracuse. Now the Orange are going to have to take care of Michigan State themselves. Uh, let's see, Matt saying, no snow here in San Antonio. I'd love to see Orange Nation arrive two weeks from now. Yeah, you're right in the heart there, Matt. Who knows? You could be seeing some Syracuse fans come your way. I don't know if they can make the Final Four, but, hey, weirder things have happened, especially like, you know, an hour ago when UMBC beat Virginia. So crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, let's see, John, a daytime game. Who would have thunk it? Yeah, they're messing with the Syracuse karma right there, right? Uh, Bruce saying, my lovely wife said she's going to divorce me because I yelled at the game. <laughs> LOL, go Syracuse. Well, I'm sure you had a lovely marriage, but, uh, you know, look, it's March Madness. Things happen, right? Uh, Mary saying, Bruce, I yelled a lot at, at, at the TV too. So there you go. Mary's backing him up. Uh, Keith saying, my wife just slammed the door because I'm still up. Marriages are in peril here with the, with the live chat and, and watching basketball games. But when you stood on that altar and took those vows, what did they say? In sickness and in health and in March madness. I think they said that, right? I'll have to go back and, and watch my wedding video again. I'm pretty sure that they said something like that. Uh, marriage madness, as, as Christopher says there in the comments. Yes, good point there. So uh, I'll give you some other – got the game times pulled up here for Sunday. So Butler and Purdue is the 12-10 game. Syracuse, Michigan State is the 240 game. Then you got Texas A&M, North Carolina at 5-15. 6-10 game is Nevada, Cincinnati. 7-10 Clemson and Auburn, 7-45. So you're wondering UMBC knocks down Virginia. They get the nine seed Kansas State on at 7-45. And then Xavier plays at 840, followed by Marshall and West Virginia at 940. So that is what the schedule looks like on Sunday uh, when Syracuse will be in action against Michigan State. So as we mentioned um, with Michigan State, it's really – it's Miles Bridges, who's the big guy you got to concern. He's a zone buster. He can shoot from all over the place, but they can shoot threes. And Michigan State is a good defensive team as well. I mean. They're a three seed, and there were times when they, they kind of struggled in, in Big Ten play down the stretch when, you know, they didn't look like the mighty Michigan State team that they can be, but they seem to be finding their groove at the right time of the year. So I, I'll, I'll maintain what I said a moment ago. You can't win this game on Sunday the same way they just beat Arizona State and the same way they just beat TCU. You certainly want to play good defense. You certainly want to try and bring some of those elements there, but you're not going to win that game in the manner in which you won it tonight, in the man, well, technically last night because it's Saturday morning. You know, Syracuse is not going to beat Arizona State and TCU. You, you can't carry that over to the way you beat Michigan State. If I'm wrong about that, we'll come on the chat and be like, hey, they keep winning games the way that they have. But you're going to need O'Shea Brissett to recover on the offensive end, be the guy who was against Arizona State. I think you're going to need to see Tyus Battle really have a great offensive game. And that one. But, you know, look, if Syracuse can keep the X factors up, Merrick Dolzhai and, you know, Pascal Chuku getting to the free throw line, even Barama had a couple of kind of Johnny on the spot baskets 
under the hoop tonight. This is a team that just scraps together everything it can find to get these wins. And they'll have to continue that in a way against Michigan State, but they're, they're going to have to score a little bit. They're definitely going to have to score a little bit in that game. Uh, Michael saying, pack it in, let them shoot threes, only shoot or they'll go nuts on offense in the paint. That's very true. Uh, Vinny saying that Izzo was disgusted with his team tonight. That was a very physical game, Vinny. That's a good point. There was, that game was getting rough between Bucknell and Michigan State. I thought there was honestly going to be some ejections coming in that thing. It, it was starting to come down to it, and thankfully it kind of evened out. It didn't get too ugly in that one. But yeah, Michigan State, they're going to come at Syracuse too, so you got to be careful about that. you got to be careful about fouls. Merrick Dolge, I fouled out tonight, so you got to be careful about that. Pascal, I don't think is quite seen as physical a team as this underneath with a few exceptions that have come his way throughout the season. So, uh, you know, he's going to have to stay out of foul trouble as well. And, you know, I'll give credit to Matthew Moyer for coming in and, you know, hitting that free throw at the end. But, man, there's just something missing from his game right now. And this is a Syracuse team that only has, you know, a a seven-man rotation, really six, because of how limited Barama is with his knee tendonitis. But Matthew just has trouble getting in the flow. He had the travel at one point, turnover. He had the shot clock violation. Remember that in in Syracuse's game against TCU last night where, you know, he just – he's really – hesitant is the word and if he was just a little bit more consistent if he could give Syracuse some quality minutes and they need him to given the lack of depth on this team he did come in and hold down the fort as well as he could with Merrick Dolzhai out but I mean it's just at the point where he's only going to play when absolutely necessary if they could get, just get something out of him at this point you know it would be a little better for Syracuse but again they did they just kind of survive in advance at this point despite the fact that, I mean, that, that, this is incredible. This is incredible that this team has made it this far. They only have six guys. I mean, again, technically seven, but really, with Moyer's been a ghost for the most part, and Barama is just so limited with that knee tendonitis. you got to be careful about his minutes and how he plays. They only have five guys. <laughs> and your big three, you know, we, we brought up, let me pull up the numbers again. Okay, O'Shea Brissett goes four of 16. Frank Howard goes 3 of 11. Tyus Battle goes 3 of 12. But this team plays so well on defense and grinds it out. And, again, rebounding was huge. Rebounding has been the biggest gauge of success for this team this year. If you want to know if Syracuse won or lost, you typically look at the rebounding category this year. But when those guys, that's your big three, are combining to shoot that poorly and score a combined, let's see, they scored a combined 27 points. Nine out of ten times you're losing that game against a TCU team that's 19th in the country in scoring. But defense, rebounding, grinding, hashtag free throws matter, just getting the buckets whenever they could, scrapping and clawing, what this Syracuse team is. That's what this team is, okay? By the way, uh, anybody catch Charles Barkley at halftime? This, This really is disappointing that you get to this time of the year, and this is all CBS and TNT can can pull together. I mean, I like Charles Barkley as much as the next guy on certain things, but he's up there at halftime saying that Syracuse has always been a team that struggled on the offensive end with the exception of Carmelo Anthony. And I'm just sitting there saying, they paid you to put you on this set in front of millions of people and say that. I mean, Charles Barkley can say anything he wants and get away with it, but I mean, that's just complete and utter nonsense. This Syracuse team is against the norm. Syracuse teams have always been known for offensive play, free-flowing, up and down the court. You can go through all the names. Syracuse has had six straight uh, players picked in the first round of the NBA draft. I mean, we can go on and on here. What is Syracuse known for? Offensive players. Derek Coleman sitting right, you know, in the stands tonight. And Billy Owens, and you know, the all-time leading scorer in the history of the Big East is Lawrence Moten. He wasn't the sexiest player in the world, but to say that, oh, they've always been like that, it's just – you, you pick a cliche and you stick with it. And Reggie Miller, was it today? I think it was today, It was, or maybe it was yesterday. Reggie Miller was doing the Iona game and said that, you know, they've been the most successful program <laughs> in the state of New York. And I'm just like, did we move to Pennsylvania? Like, what? Don't put NBA people on college basketball games. And these are really uh, – Reggie Miller and Charles Barkley know – 
basketball. But for them to just spew this garbage, it's like you're insulting the intelligence of a college basketball audience that's been there all year. And then you get all these people that parachute in for March Madness. They're like, oh, really? Is that true? No, it's nonsense. It's nonsense. It's insulting, frankly, for an audience that, that no, that's just basic stuff. Do your homework. Do your homework, okay? Ah, oh, that is so frustrating. I'm sure you guys noticed that. I'm just watching Charles Barkley. I'm like, what, what are you talking about? Like, what do you mean they've always been like this? This is the exception to the rule. I mean, all you got to do is go back and look at Syracuse didn't make the tournament last year, but Syracuse was an offensive team just a year ago, right? Ay, 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 just drives me up the wall. There's perceptions about the zone, certainly, but, you know, it doesn't take that much homework to figure out that that's not what Syracuse, that's just not what Syracuse is all about. It's their identifying mark. It's what makes them stand out. But, you know, come on, Chuck. You know, Jim Beheim was coaching on the Olympic team with LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, Kevin Durant, all the biggest names in the game three times. Do you think he was there by accident? I mean, Coach K, certainly his relationship there helped. But the guy knows the basketball beyond the college game. It's not just this 2-3 zone and the way Syracuse is playing now. So, Anyway, I had to get that off my chest. That was just ridiculous. And he's up there in front of a national television audience saying this stuff. It's getting late, and I'm getting frustrated with Charles Barkley. So what do you say we wrap it up right there, guys? But, hey, we'll come back on Sunday, and uh, we'll be here at a reasonable time because Syracuse is playing at 2.40 in the afternoon. But I appreciate everybody that stayed up late with us tonight because – Hey, Syracuse won. You might as well party the night away. Happy St. Patrick's Day, by the way. I shouldn't have said that at the end. I should have said that at the beginning because it is officially St. Patrick's Day. There's my bad Irish accent for you there. So happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. Enjoy yourself today. Take it easy, all right? Slow but steady on St. Patrick's Day, right? Slow but steady. Best meal of the year. It's corned beef and cabbage day. Oh, it's the best meal of the year. I am so excited about that. So enjoy your Saturday, and then uh, we'll meet back here on Sunday after the Orange take on Michigan State for a shot at the Sweet 16. How about that? That's incredible to say right there. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Uh, Look for all of our coverage this morning because technically it's Saturday. I'm going to go write a recap for you guys now. It'll be up first thing in the morning about five, six hours from now. That'll be up. And, of course, Mike Waters, Donna DeTota, Chris Carlson, Denny Nett on the photos. All the great coverage coming your way from Detroit as well. So enjoy uh, your Saturday. Enjoy your St. Patrick's Day. And we'll be back here on Sunday after the Orange take on Michigan State.